Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 563, Viruses and Immunization. Who is at the highest risk of not responding to immunizations and getting COVID? BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. I'm Dr. Kathy Maupin of BioBalance Health. Today we're going to talk about the risk factors for getting COVID and for your immunization not working, or both. If one doesn't work, then you get COVID. In any case, um, the basic idea for immunization and it working is that an immunization should trigger your immune system, your own immune system must be intact for an immunization to work. So the immunization has to go to your white cells and tell your white cells to make antibodies to that particular virus. And if you aren't healthy, or if you are on certain medications, or if you have certain inherited medical diseases, then you're at risk for not developing immunity even after an immunization. And that can be terrifying and it's frustrating as well. So I think it's important that we go through the risks of not having an, uh, an immunization that actually works for you and protects you. And also, what are your risk factors for COVID? If they're both the same, you don't want to get COVID and you want an uh, immune system that will respond to, uh, to a, an immunization, then you need to follow these, uh, these problems and see if you can adjust them in your life. I mean, a lot of them are lifestyle problems, lifestyle situations that put you at risk, but also some of them are genetic and you can't do anything about it, so you have to optimize the lifestyle things. So as you can see in, the, um, in my list, over, the list over my shoulder, if you're over 60, you may be at higher risk of not having your immune system respond to the immunization and give you immunity. That is because as we age, our immune cells are less in number, they're less active, our thymus is, is right behind our breastbone, and that's where our immune cells, our white cells, come from. The thymus is very big when we're children and babies, and it shrinks and shrinks and shrinks, and when we're at 60 in general, our, that's our critical age for the thymus, it just doesn't make as many white cells and it doesn't fight disease very well. So not only just viruses, but viruses, cancer, and bacteria do not, do not respond to the different attacks we have on our body like they used to after that age. So if you're over 60, you have to listen to my next health cast about the things that you can do to improve your own immunity so that you'll respond to these immunizations. If you have a child who is under three months, their immune system specifically comes from their mother. So while they were in utero, they were absorbing the antibodies from their mother's bloodstream and they had immunity the minute they came out, they were immune to the same things that their mother was in general. So over the first three months, their immune system starts discarding the white cells that, came, that were stimulated by mom's antigens, and they then develop their own. But during that first three months is a critical time when they may not be able to fight off infection. So if you have a zero to three month child, that child should not be out in public during a pandemic. That child should not be uh, passed amongst all the um, all of the family during a pandemic. You can, I mean, 
it just should not be in, good, in close contact. But after three months, the baby's developing immunity and should have a good immune system working unless they have some other problem, their preemies, or they've had some type of surgery in the first three months for like heart defects or, or a cleft palate something like that, that would decrease their immunity again, and they'd have to wait longer to be in public. Um, poor nutrition is one of the biggest risk factors of people in the United States. We're fat, but we don't have good nutrition. We eat the wrong things. We don't take time to eat whole foods. We don't eat vegetables. We don't eat fruit, or we don't, or one or the other. We don't eat enough meat, cheese, eggs for protein. We eat junk. We eat stuff from the center of the grocery store, which is all processed. We don't go around the outside and eat unprocessed foods, which are good for us. And that's what we were born to, to eat. So fresh foods and frozen foods are ideal for keeping the enzymes and the vitamins and all of the good nutritional factors in them for you to have a healthy immune system. It's necessary for you to eat that kind of a diet for you to be fully immune after an immunization. If you're just eating junk food, I would not expect to be completely immune to a virus. I don't think that, that you will have the same response as somebody who is very careful about the foods they eat and don't eat junk food. That's just, I say that every day in my office. Um, and if you don't have that kind of diet, you should be taking a lot of vitamins and minerals to add to and balance the bad diet that you have. Um, inadequate vitamin D is a big problem. And they have now finally proven that a lack of vitamin D increased a person's risk for COVID. So everybody thinks they go outside and they get plenty of vitamin D, especially in the summer. Well, it depends on where you live, and it depends on what color skin you have. See how dark I am? The minute I got my tan this summer, I stopped absorbing vitamin D. The body shuts down absorbing D the tanner and darker you get. So if you have dark skin anyway, or if you're African American, or if you're um, from Mexico and, and have uh, come into the United States, you may not have enough vitamin D to be healthy and to fight COVID. So the first thing you should do is take 5,000 units of vitamin D every single day, and your children should take the children's dose of, of vitamin D. If you are white-skinned, pale is what I call it. I'm never pale. So if you're pale and you go out in the sun for an hour, you'll probably get enough vitamin D. But honestly, you start tanning, you're going to get less and less D. So most of us who live in this temperate climate where the United States is, except maybe Arizona, Southern Texas, and uh, California and Florida, we need to take vitamin D all year long, and especially in the winter when we aren't, the, it's not warm enough to be outside with our skin exposed. So vitamin D is huge, and the studies have now shown that people with higher vitamin D respond better to the immune, immunizations, but also don't, don't, as, don't get COVID as severely, they aren't as sick, and don't and rarely die of COVID. A few other things decrease your immune response, which is necessary. Your own immunity is necessary to respond to an immunization. Smoking, chewing tobacco, uh, and drinking alcohol more than 10 drinks a week. All of those things that we consider bad habits, they are. And they're bad habits for a reason, because they make... A, they increase our risk of liver damage, lung cancer, liver cancer, but they also decrease our ability to fight viruses. So if you are, if your habits are such that these are your ha bad habits, then you're doing a lot mo more to yourself than you even think because your immunization may not be as effective because of these factors, or you may be more likely to get a severe uh, COVID infection any viral infection. Um, people who are obese, who are over, um, I can't even say BMI because BMI doesn't cut it. When you have a lot of muscle, BMI is always high. But if, if you are overweight and everybody knows who they are when they're overweight, then you have a higher rate of inflammation in your body. Inflammation 
is not a good um, environment for fighting a virus. So you will be less likely to respond to the vaccine and more likely to get COVID. So losing weight is imperative and almost 50% of our population is now overweight. So it's imperative that you do that to be healthy and not get sick and not be part of this uh, pandemic. Most of us don't exercise enough after we're children. We should exercise every day or at least six days a week for 45 minutes at, at each, each time, basically. 45 minutes a day, six days a week. And that stimulates your immune system. It's very interesting how it makes your immune system more active and better and more able to respond to a vaccine and more able to respond to um, a virus that tries to invade your body. Um, high stress life, how does that work? Well, when you have a high stress life, you have your adrenal glands always pouring out cortisol. Cortisol suppresses your immune system. So either taking cortisone or taking cortisol for a disease or a, for some reason, maybe asthma and lung infection, oftentimes that will lower your immunity to vaccines. So I would suggest you get off of your uh, cortisone if it's, if it's just a, a seven day course or wait till it's over uh, and wait a week or so afterwards to get your vaccine so that your immune system is not shut down by, by this steroid. But if you're under stress and, and it's not controllable, then you're gonna have to have some other activities that help you with your stress. One is you're, you're gonna find, have to find a way to get rid of it. So you're going to have to learn yoga. You're going to have to get a punching bag in the basement and go downstairs and punch that punching bag to get rid of your stress. Some people exercise to get rid of stress. Some people meditate. Some people pray. Some people read books. Some people lie down and just kind of disappear and don't think of anything. And that calms them down. That makes their adrenal gland come down. And oftentimes, I'll also advise people with high stress to suppress all of those big surges of cortisol to take Endodrin. Endodrin is a supplement, and it's made of um, animal adrenal, and it blunts the reaction of your cortisol so you don't get that anxiety attack feeling, and it decreases the surges so your body's not exposed to so much. So the mo more you can do to calm down and not be on um, a rant or not feel like everything's crashing in on you are to do those things and that will make you healthier and more able to handle um, any kind of virus that comes your way. Now here's something you can't really do anything about but in the near future this information will be um, available. Uh, during the COVID pandemic scientists and geneticists have been studying the genes of people who get severe COVID or die from COVID and the genes of people who never get it even when they're exposed. And they have, um, they also have been looking at people who don't respond to immunizations. So they found, according to the Journal of Nature, uh, COVID, where the article is called COVID-19 host, meaning the people that get it, Genetics Initiative, Mapping the Human Genetic Architecture of COVID-19. So they have found multiple pieces of DNA in people who get it and get a severe case, and they have, and it's repetitive. They found people who get a severe case often have the same genes as other people who get a severe case. Then they found people who don't get it and are immune to it uh, despite all other um, variables, those people have different genes, or th they have similar genes to the people who don't get it, but different genes from the people who do get it. So that will be coming, and if you know your genes from 23andMe, or you have had them done by Ancestry.com or a geneticist, then you will be able to see if you are at higher risk just by your birth. And that stuff happens. I mean, everybody's got something. You can, I've never seen a, a genetic workup that didn't find something in 
everybody's workup that might be a problem. We mutate as we produce more children and as we as our genes go through the ancestral process. So that's just part of life and we are born with this and oftentimes these particular snips of genes can cause us trouble. So those are the risk factors for not responding that are lifestyle and, um, and inherited uh, problems. The risk factors for getting COVID are not responding to the viruses for medical reasons are, um, are multiple different diseases or medications for those diseases. These medications can actually cause the immunization to be ineffective. And if you're on some of these medicines or you have one of these illnesses, you may want to try another type of medication that does not suppress your immune system. Um, so my list here is um, related to all viruses, but we're concentrating on COVID at this time. Uh, if you have an autoimmune disease and you're on a medication called a biologic, biologics are um, immune suppressors, and they, sh they literally suppress the response of your immune system. If you are on those drugs, it's likely that if you're Im immunized, you well, may think that you're immune, but the immunization may not work for you because your immune system is being quieted down by your medication so that you don't get your autoimmune disease, the diseases that fight your own tissues. If you're on steroids for that very same disease, that can also decrease your ability to respond to a vaccination or to respond and kill COVID virus if, you're, if you are um, confronted with the virus. So those are things like lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, um, psoriasis, um, MS. You should talk to your doctors about and, and about the treatment that would be least likely to suppress your immune system so your uh, vaccine will work. If you've had a previous history of cancer and you've had either chemotherapy or radiation frequently, but not always, um, patients will have a lower immune response to bacteria and viruses, so they get sick more often. But that is just one symptom of a, a poor immune system. And the other is that your, your um, immune system may not respond to your um, vaccine. So you have to think about that. What, you know, if you've had that, you can't just ignore it. You have to know that you're going to have to bump up your system with vitamins and other things so you can respond normally to an uh, immunization that might save your life. If you've had an organ transplant, you are on immune suppressants because no, even if the tissue type was matched and everything looks great, you're not the same genetics exactly. So most or almost all people who have had an organ transplant have to take immune suppressants throughout their life. This is another issue that might make it not healthy for you to take an immunization or not worth it to take an immunization, but for you to just have to stay six feet away from people, wear a mask, use other types of protection so that you don't get a virus that is an epidemic or a pandemic. Diseases that involve immune deficiency, such as AIDS or, or pre-AIDS or any of those types of um, permutations of the AIDS virus, uh, even if you're treated, you uh, may be still low on immuni immunization <laughs> and low on white blood cells. Your, your white T, your T cells and your T killer cells are low in AIDS. And therefore, sometimes that puts you at risk for both illness and for cancers. So it is really important for you to take your medication. And it is really important for you to take vitamins, have good nutrition, exercise every day, do all the things you can do to bump your, nutri your um, immune system up. And one of the things that they found bumps the immune system is the addition of testosterone for both men and women who have AIDS. So testosterone replacement after age 50 
uh, is one of the things that we do for people who have AIDS to make sure that they st they're stimulating their T cells from their thymus to kill other viruses and cancers and bacteria. So it's very important, yeah, also fungi. So it's all, always important for those patients to take testosterone. It's also a good thing for people to take testosterone who are just aging, because aging, as we said earlier, aging itself can cause your immune system to tank. So when we give testosterone back, white counts come back up, people don't get sick as often, their immune systems are much healthier when they have their hormones of youth back when they're older. Uh, lack of exercise or too much exercise. Not exercising at all or exercising for hours every day suppresses your immune system. So somewhere in the middle, moderation is everything with exercise. Um, the uh, chronic inflammation from any reason, like if you've had, gosh, like I know people who have had a bad knee for years. Their CRP tells me is up, and it tells me that they've got chronic inflammation all the time. There's always a hot spot on their knee or on their elbow or whatever joint is bothering them. They don't want to get it fixed. They just take either pain medicine or injections uh, into the knee or into the joint. But they're adverse to having surgery. Well, they're putting themselves at risk for not being able to take uh, an immunization or a vaccine because... They are literally causing themselves, their bodies to have all these white cells out just and producing all of this inflammation that is kind of confusing the immune system. It makes it harder for them, for that person to actually fight a virus or become immune. And people who are um, overweight have a high CRP generally, and the CRP is inflammation, and they have to lose weight actually to get their immune system back. Um, Pre-diabetes and diabetes, you probably heard that these are risk factors uh, for getting COVID. They're also risk factors for not responding normally to the COVID vaccine. So um, get your blood sugar down with treatment and medication and lose weight. If you have type 2, if you have type 1, then try to keep your blood sugar within normal limits and keep your hemoglobin A1C down. That will improve your immune your immune response. If you have heart disease, high blood pressure, you're on medications or not on medications, you're at higher risk um, for COVID and not responding to the, to the vaccine. But if you get, take your medicine, do exactly what your doctor says, you're at lower risk. If you have a bacterial or a viral infection, when you need to get your immune system or your immunization, don't get it. Wait till you're better. Um, GI disease, uh, intestinal disease wrecks your flora or the bacteria in your intestines. And you need to get that back. Take a probiotic, uh, try to get your GI illness treated, and, um, and that will help you make the building blocks of your immune system so you can fight bacteria and viruses. Plainly, your best your best advice for you is to be as healthy as possible. These are the different pieces of being healthy, both the medical um, and the lifestyle pieces. But you, you are, you're in the driver's seat. You can make sure you get to the doctor f to take care of the illnesses that you have, that you talk to him or her and say, I want to make sure my immune system is bumped. What can you do to help me? And they should be able to do that. Um, there are some illnesses they can't, and they will have to tell you, or you can ask, am I at higher risk because of this medication, or uh, at a higher risk of not responding to, to a vaccine? And they should be able to tell you, knowing your whole history. So it's not just about the virus. It's really about you as the host for the virus and how to protect you. Immunization should be your best chance, but immunization is not going to work if you are not taking good care of yourself. So please take good care of yourself. And if you are well enough to get an immunization for the COVID virus, I advise that you get the Johnson & Johnson virus because I'm most familiar with it and I find that I've had it. And I find that um, it is most like all the other immunizations I've had throughout my life. 
So, and, and I had no response, no reaction to it. And many of the people that I've advised that to have not either. So get healthy and get your immunization. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.